There's a sense that the establishment, the political establishment, doesn't really work anymore, whether you're on the right or the left in America. And so I think that's what's really led to the rise of, of Bernie and, of course, Donald Trump. Uh, Chris Cooper is here with us today to talk with us about the campaign season 2016, in which he played, or maybe continues to play, uh, an important part as Bernie Sanders' direct mail strategist. Thanks for coming to Göttingen, Chris. Thank you for inviting me. So first of all, what's a um, direct mail strategist doing? Well, generally speaking, what we do is we're in charge of the, uh, the targeted portion of the campaign's paid communications, so in this case, direct mail. So we work with the pollsters, uh, the media strategist to, and the data analyst uh, specialist to sort of craft the universes that are most persuadable or potentially um, that are uh, most uh, inclined to agree with our candidate's message. Uh, and then we uh, put together the creative um, direct mail that we can send to them uh, to try to get them on our side. So apparently campaigns and elections in the U.S. are a huge business, much bigger than in other democracies. At the same time, it seems like it's a bit more than that in a way, not only business. For instance, would you consider working for a Republican candidate? No, absolutely not. No. It's, it's a business up to a point, but we have beliefs that are very strongly held, and I'm a progressive. I'm a Democrat. I'm proud of it. Uh, I only work for Democrats. I would never consider working for a Republican, uh, not just because uh, I don't think it's right, but because I'd be out of business if I did, <laughs> because then no one on the Democratic side would want to work with me. And the same with the other side, too. You know, we only have really two options. It's a binary system in the U.S., so you have to really choose sides, and my side is the Democratic side. Was this ever different? Was there a time when it was easier for consultants to cross lines and work for the other side? You know, maybe back in the, in the 19, early 1960s, uh, at, the, at the genesis of the business, you had Madison Avenue firms that would work on presidential campaigns, and they might pick one or the other based on who might be able to pay the bills the most. But I think in the, in the uh, political consulting industry as it's existed for the last generation at least, no, it's, you're either a D or an R. So um, as we said, so you were strongly involved with Bernie 2016 and you came very close, it was a very close battle, closer than most people expected I suppose. So uh, when was the moment when you, were th when you saw that you were really close to win the nomination and when was the moment when you realized, oh, this might get very difficult? Mm. Uh, I think I can, I can answer both questions with two moments, really. Um, the first moment when we thought that there was a real chance was New Hampshire, uh, the New Hampshire primary, which we won by 21 points, the biggest margin of victory ever for a Democratic primary in New Hampshire. Uh, and that was a real highlight. Now, and that, that propelled the campaign forward. Um, not long after that, we had a setback, which was in South Carolina, which is my home state, even though I've lived and worked in Washington, D.C. for about 20 years. I'm from South Carolina. The campaign made a major investment in South Carolina and Hillary crushed us. Uh, and so that was a big setback because we had just come off of this big win in New Hampshire. We had a lot of momentum, a lot of excitement, and then we you know, got thoroughly destroyed in South Carolina. But then a few weeks later, we had a really unexpected victory in Michigan. Uh, although it was unexpected from the sort of the political pundits perspective, those of us on the inside had a little bit of a feeling. I'm not going to say that I thought we were going to win Michigan, but I thought we could win Michigan. The environment was right there. The electorate was right. Uh, it was, um, Bernie had a really strong message against uh, these foreign trade deals that have really decimated the manufacturing economy in Michigan and Midwestern states in general over the last 30 years, 20 years. And so we thought we had a really outside chance in Michigan. And Michigan is a real swing state in a Democratic primary. It used to be a swing state in the general election. Democrats have won it in every general election, I think, going back to 1992. So it's not a swing state in the general, but it is in the primary, and most people thought Hillary would do well there. Um, and, uh, and we won Michigan. It was close, but we won. And that was a real moment where I think a lot of people said, hmm, maybe this thing could happen. But then it was only a couple of weeks later, I think, when we had a big setback in Ohio, which, you know, because we had won Michigan, we made a major investment in Ohio. They look somewhat similar. They're right next to each other, both Midwestern states, you know, blue-collar manufacturing base of, uh, economies there. And, uh, and so we made a major investment in Ohio. There's a lot of excitement around the campaign there, and we lost. And it, that was on the same day that we lost a few other states. And it, and it became uh, fairly apparent after having lost a bunch of the southern states, like South Carolina and others, um, that once we lost Ohio and a few other states that it was going to be difficult. And I think that was around March 
15th, if I'm not mistaken. So it was a, it was a really great month. Things still, you know, progressed onwards from there, but uh, Ohio was a big, you know, delegate prize. And if we and if we had been able to win it, or uh, Illinois, which was also on the same night, I believe, then we could have really gone on. So the person you work for is described as a populist or as an outsider, labels that I think he doesn't reject, some of them at least. Um, so where does all the discontent come from? Why is everybody trying to be the maverick in the race? Why are people so afraid of the label establishment or just to be a politician? Yeah, well, um, I don't think I can answer that in a few minutes. I've got a whole presentation on it tonight for 45 minutes. But um, a number of factors, you know, although the economy is, is good generally in America, this, the uh, after effects of the recession 2008-2009 are still being felt, particularly among um, you know, lower middle income uh, whites, blue collar working uh, white families, particularly among white men, um, middle aged and older. Uh, we've had a lot of cultural changes in the country over the last eight years, really sort of coinciding with Barack Obama's presidency, that have made a lot of um, sort of conservative leaning people really uncomfortable with the status quo in America. Uh, on the left, among progressives, while we've had the presidency and, and our people are quite happy with President Obama, uh, a lot of young people have felt sort of that uh, things aren't going as well as they should be. Um, you have a, a huge amount of student uh, loan debt that people in their 20s and 30s have to bear. Um, you know, stagnating wages affect people at the bottom of the income ladder uh, very much and, you know, young people are usually there. Um, and they've, there's a sense that government and Washington politicians have not faced up to the big challenges that everybody sees that we have, whether you're right or left. You know, this, you know the problems that Wall Street created during the recession. You know, we've got global warming. You've got, um, you know, income inequality. And there, so there's just, and Washington hasn't done anything. And uh, so there's just, I think there's a, there's a sense that the establishment, the political establishment doesn't really work anymore, whether you're on the right or the left in America. And so I think that's what's really led to the rise of, of Bernie and, of course, Donald Trump. Well, that was a pretty consistent question, uh, answer to a very complicated question. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks. I didn't even practice it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>